they like they're away from their scenery, like their normal scenery. So they you see a different side, and you, you see like nowadays the kids are trying to be like adults, and then you see them doing like kid stuff and laughing and giggling and stuff, and you're like, there's the kid. You know, that's what we want to see. We want to see that kid, not the person that's trying to be an adult. At the end of the day, we're here for the whole time that they're out of them rooms. And um, we make sure that they have their breakfast, you know, they're doing their hygiene teeth. We're actually here, we're caring after them. You know, unfortunately, some of them out there don't have that sort of support. Just understanding a lot with the kids, like the, where, where they come from, their background, uh, being, knowing the, there is a fine line between getting along with them really well and being their friend. Uh, it is a fine line, but at the same time, it's a huge difference. Uh, and I think knowing, knowing that and finding the balance in that is key. Trying to find a way to become more successful is part of the challenge, how we can impact the lives of these young people better. Just be you. And that's what the young people here want because they come from that, um, that background to the negativity because they have a lot of time in their hands to work you out. <laughs> Whereas you and me go home and we don't have that. Well, I'm a qualified personal trainer and I was working at the PCYC as a personal trainer and running the gym there. And my role towards the end ended up uh, changing a little bit and I was doing a lot of programs with the youth and some of them were kids that were obviously in and out of here. Music's one of my big passions so that definitely helped me get along with a lot of the boys and they all love music in here so some of these young fellas with all the technology come through nowadays can use all the different instruments on there and make their own kind of style of music. They all got different backgrounds, they've all been through different things. I build a big bond with these boys, so we call it a rapport. We build a good rapport. Um, I think that's where I've succeeded and I've got, built a good rapport. I can walk around to any unit and um, all the boys or girls will know me and have a laugh. Um, yeah, so it's good. It's, um, you're, you're basically like a big brother or a big, you know, an older friend that um, they can turn to if they're in trouble or anything else, you know. I like that feeling. I'm the oldest of four as well, so just a natural little play for me, really. Every young person will come into the centre on silver. Yeah, so that's their status. They're already on silver. After a week, if they've had no incidences and their behaviour's been top-notch, they hit gold. And then from there, it's two weekly gold, three weekly gold, monthly gold. And every week that they go up, they, uh, their incentives are a little bit more. We put a lot more responsibility on the boys themselves to to actually act like a bit more like a young man rather than um, a lost child. Are in, in a classroom looking at PowerPoint presentations and learning the theory side of everything um, but then you get to go out and you've got to do hands-on stuff. Learning about culture, that was a big thing for me. Like I knew a lot about the Aboriginal culture but not much about Torres Strait Islander culture. Procedures and policies and what our role's going to be. I'm an army brat and joined the army myself. Um, got out of that and spent 10 years in the IT um, security cameras, all that sort of stuff. I come from hospitality, so I've definitely learnt a lot. <laughs> the good thing actually that I learnt is you can't come in here and be all about safety and security and then be all about youth work. You have to be in between, that hybrid as they call it. Security is obviously a big thing. You obviously you want to go home to your family every night, so security is a big thing, but you got to be mindful of the young kids and, and what they've been through and just try and be a role model for them. Yeah, you, you don't really want to um, take a kid down or, you know, um, put him into separation or something. You know, you want them to not enjoy their time, but, you know, while they're in here, I think that's where de-escalation comes into it. So it's about focus and reflection on yourself. If you have a bad day, if they say anything, it comes in this other ear, out the other ear. If you let it in your heart, it will destroy you. Oh yeah, you, you, you tread a fine line between uh, developing this relationship 
Uh, and uh, that's, that's how this place runs. They'll call you every name that you're probably some that you've never even heard invented yet, spit on you, assault you, whatever the case may be and whatever. That's all part of it. I've been noticing more so recently with the newer staff that we get is that they're a little bit gobsmacked as to how it is out here. And as in regards to, you know, that they, that they are young criminals we are working with. It's not a high school, it's not a, it's not a holiday at camp, it's not a boarding school. They are aggressive, violent young people here and they, they do swear, they do fight, they do all these sorts of behaviours and it, I think, yeah, the biggest thing would be, yeah, just don't be so thrown off by it. Like, it's kind of expected that's what the behaviours are you're going to be dealing with. I felt myself, like, I can't be pretty there, young, 23, so I learned, about, I learned a lot about myself and, like, how I react to situations because, yeah, the workplace you are in, the young people do tend to push you, you know, to, you know, and, if, and you know, test your limits and that. So I, you know, I sort of found out heaps about myself, you know, where the limits were, like, you know, the boundaries and like, you know, I've already got nieces and nephews, but so I don't, you know, I don't discipline kids, I don't have kids, so I sort of learned real quick, like, you know. So it's it sort of, it's sort of, sort of been a grown, a grown experience for myself, which is a positive thing, I found. Are we going to that? Yeah, him, Jake. What I find here, how I got to where I am and love the job, is you need to speak up and uh, speak your mind. Be real, don't be fake. As I said, if you be fake, the kids are gonna pick up and they'll play on that hardcore. Like, just come in and you've gotta be in here for the right reasons. And you gotta, in the end run, you also have to have a heart. Well, that's how, um, by being fair, firm and consistent, that's my, my, my sort of personal rule, is that um, you learn the respect by acting that way. Uh, and, uh, and treating them with the, uh, as they would treat you or treat others and whatever, and trying to build that type of image uh, and whatever, because a lot of them come from backgrounds which don't have that or it's very, very lacking, you know, and, uh, and, uh, and some of them have never experienced that. That's why the, the role is called a youth worker, because you've got to you have that hands-on, engaged approach as well, not just be a real military-minded, like, commanding sort of officer. It's, it is a little bit, fair bit more hands-on and engaging with the young people. 100%, I reckon that's, that's what I try to tell the new trainees when they come with the new staff. Um, just be genuine. Um, they're just like me and you. They can tell when someone's fake. You know, you, you, they won't respond to you that well. Um, you'll get a better rapport with, with them if you be genuine. But sometimes, like, when you see them come back in and you, you feel disappointed in them, but then you feel disappointed in yourself more because you feel like you're not doing your job properly, really, yeah. as a youth worker, or you're not getting through to them as yeah. much as you think you are. 